Dude, Brad. What's up? You are not going to believe what I found at the library today. Do not tell me there's no one them ostrich eggs. No, I, we're, we're, we're pretty clear on that. Um, uh, luckily, I have we have a great hospital in town. But anyways, um, after I got out of the hospital, uh, you know, let, let's just change my life around. Just go to the library, you know, get some of that knowledge from the books. I like and it. I found this weird book. Kind of, it kind of looks like it was made out of like dead human skin and written in like blood. And I'm like, well, why is the library got this weird ass book? Anyway, so I rented it and, you know, just like skip through the pages and just changed some weird words and all that. And overall, it's a pretty good book. You skip, you you actually chanted the, the phrases out of some random ass book from the library made out of human flesh? Yeah, you know, I just didn't think it was going to do anything. And you are all going to die tonight. What was that? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, let me go check that out real quick. Okay. That did not sound good, ladies and gentlemen. Did not like the sound of that. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. The hell you are. We're gonna get you. Whoa, Brad, where are you going? What's up with him? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Brad. I got the Brett Man here with Good Real Hunting, i.e. Good Real Hunting 2020. We hunt the good reels so you don't have to. Uh, so welcome to the channel. If you're new, be sure to check out some of these other new videos that we've been putting out for Good Real Hunting 2020. But today, we are going to go ahead and talk about the Evil Dead uh, franchise. We're going to start the review series for that with Evil Dead 1981, the original, the OG, the movie that put Sam Raimi up on the map back in 1981. Um, and we are excited to talk about it. So welcome and enjoy. So let's get into it. Brett, why don't you fill us in about the, the cast here? Uh, the cast um, in this awesome movie is we got the legendary Bruce Campbell. We got Ellen Sandweiss, Richard Dimenicor, Betsy Baker, and Teresa Tilly. All right. Freaking awesome stuff, man. So this will be a spoiler review on the entire series. So this is your one and only warning of the spoilers. So stop this video, watch all the franchise, and come right back to these videos uh, so you can hear our thoughts about this film and the franchise. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so the movie in general, the first one, 1981 uh, flick, is about a group of friends that go out to a cabin in the woods. I wonder where they got that title from. Uh, and the, uh, they go out to a title, uh, cabin in the woods, uh, and then uh, they find the, uh, the book in the basement that Brett found at the library there at the beginning. And they do the same thing he did, and you know, weird stuff starts to happen, man. They, they start awakening... Uh, some uh, some some demons and stuff from the woods from the from the from the book. Um, so that's what uh, we're talking about today, and we're excited. Uh, what do you like about it, Brett? Oh man, what I like about it for first off, I have never seen any movie within this franchise, so this will just be a fresh perspective of a new viewer on this franchise. Um, what I thought about it, the first thing that really just caught my eye was just the camera work. The camera work was just amazing with what they were able to do, especially for the budget. That's, again, what I was really impressed with this particular film. It's just the budget was so low, and with everything that they accomplished was just incredible. And like, just the camera work, just um, going through the forest and like just being within the eyes of the demon um, was just a really great. It's just awesome. I agree. The budget was actually is three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, which at the time was for the effects that they pulled off um, was substantial. I mean, obviously, no low numbers at the time. Slightly above Halloween in seventy eight, uh, but they did a lot more with effects and things here, obviously. So, um, yeah, the the budget was ridiculously low. The camera work, like you said, was one of my favorite parts of the movie. That's where you can really see the skill that Sam Raimi's got. 
um, there very early in his career. Uh, the way he follows the, char- the, the characters around in the cabin and stuff. And you got some small kind of one-take shots in there as well. Um, where you, like he's just following people around, and it's just it's very steady. It's uh, it's it flows very well, and he's there's there's some shaky cam in there too, which is one of the things I really liked, and I love the shots as uh, from the POV uh, of the demons and stuff where they're chasing people around, and you get that in the the following movies as well, uh, like Evil Dead Two. It's big in that, mm-hmm. um, but we'll get into that. Uh, so I, yeah, the camera stuff was definitely awesome. I love the way it followed the characters. And did the POV shots. Those were some of my favorite shots in the movie. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, some other things I did like about the movie as well. Um, I think it accomplished the creepy atmosphere. Just like just to look at the cabin, just the forest, like the time they shot during the day. It's just like maybe fairy feel what we call um uneasy uh, just didn't feel safe going into the cabin and i just worried about the characters just immediately before they even stepped foot in that cabin so again great job by sam for uh making me feel that way yeah the cabin was such a cool uh setting if you will and that by the way was filmed in morristown tennessee which we're both from the knoxville tennessee area um of course, now we live in different areas, but uh, it was cool to have that such an iconic movie be shot so close to home for us. So um, we definitely loved that, and the, you know that obviously that that cabin becomes a an icon in the horror franchise uh, later down the road, mm-hmm. um, starting with this movie, of course. So the 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 cabin itself was awesome, uh, the setting in the woods and everything. Um, I also like the uh, the music. In the movie, I thought it was really creepy and eerie, mm-hmm. and really added a lot. Uh, did you notice that? Yeah, I did notice that. Like, and they played the music um, just in like just the perfect time, just to make a particular scene just like more creepy and uneasy. Just not a good feeling. Uh, music, uh, especially in the horror genre, plays a very important factor for that. And I thought the Evil Dead just nailed it, man. Absolutely. Um, so another thing I liked, um, I don't. Did you notice the Hills Have Eyes reference there in the in the basement when they find the reels and stuff, the the audio reels? There's yes, a poster I did. for the original Hills Have Eyes down there, which was a nice little throwback at the time to Wes Craven's movie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I just love when like other um, horror movies just show the appreciation of other classic horror films. Like I really do enjoy that. Yeah, and they do that in the second one too. But we'll get into that. Oh, and um, the remake. Yes, of course, the remake as well. Um, Yeah, the cabin was great. Let's see what else we got here. Um, So the effects in general, I thought, um, you know, obviously when you watch it today, it's a little goofy, some of the the clay animation stuff, the stop motion clay animation at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the the time, for the budget they had, it was revolutionary. It was fantastic stuff. And, like, you know, you get some brutal kills at the end with the stomach bleeding out and stuff and arms getting chopped off and flying around. And, I mean... It was really cool to see how much heart they put into the movie and how much effort they put into it, which is something you don't really see a lot of today um, because, you know, nowadays you got CGI for everything. They put a lot of work into what they did get out of. And again, it doesn't age very well, but it's awesome to see how much effort they put into it. Oh, absolutely. Um, and um, another thing I loved about this movie, too, is just like the makeup effects for the uh, demons, too, for when the, um, our char- the characters get possessed. Um, it's just like kind of like the makeup design, just make him feel extremely creepy right off the gap. Like the first one I saw when um, Cheryl gets possessed, I was immediately freaked out. I'm like, OK, I'm not sure <laughs> what I'm about to get myself into. Babe, queen of spades. Four of hearts. Eight of spades. Two of spades. Jack of diamonds. Jack of clubs. <laughs> Um, but which I'm glad I'm, I stuck to it because again, I really enjoyed and loved the hell out of this movie again, just due to the practical effects. Cause I am a practical fed person. I think in the horror genre, practical effects are just the way to go, which not all CGI is bad. However, like, and, and we'll go into a separate video talking about the differences between practical effects and CGI, but like, with that during that time era, the practical effects were really, really good. 
Absolutely. They were, and it was just the effort that goes into it was freaking awesome, man. One of my favorite parts was the, the, the dagger, the skull dagger. I thought that thing was badass, dude. That oh, yeah. Was- Oh that man, cool. like I wish it I wish it played a bit like a bigger part like um within the later on in the franchise. Yeah. But yeah, in that first one, um uh, just them using that, it just looked awesome. And it just it God, I can't say enough good words about that dagger. It was cool. Obviously, my biggest positive for this movie is and it's not as good it's not obviously this only gets better as the franchise goes on, but it's Bruce Campbell. Um, he's not as good in the first movie, and that's one of my negatives we'll get into later um, in this movie as he is later on in the franchise, obviously. But he's still, I mean, he still put, puts out a good performance, and he's fun to watch. Like, you know, he's a good character. And, I mean, throughout the movie, yes, like, he's not, he's 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 kind of stale compared to where he is in the second and the third one in the Ash vs. Evil Dead. But it, towards the end of the movie, once he's the only one left and he's freaking kicking ass, like, it... It starts to turn territories there to where he's he's taking over the 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 movie and the role as Ash, um, so he he kind of t- he can, he comes out strong there at the end for me as a positive. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, like we can go like we pretty much make a whole video just dedicated to Bruce Campbell, but um, without um, Ash, um, Bruce. I just feel like without Ash in this movie, I feel like this movie wouldn't be as good as like just I would say like a classic. It wouldn't be a classic without Bruce Campbell's interpretation of the Ash character. Um, I immediately wanted the root for Ash, and I wish that would be uh, part of my negatives on the other characters later on. But I was just so invested in Ash, like I kind of relate to him a little bit, just starting out as kind of like this shy, and um, all he wants to do is just give his girlfriend linda um some piece of jewelry and just to spend time with her but just throughout not only just in this movie but the entire franchise uh, you could just uh, see that character development just increase within each and every single scene absolutely he's great um okay so that's all for me for pros i don't know if you have anything else um no i think we hit on the major keys on the positives i feel like our positives were pretty much spot on Okay, well, let's jump on over to the negatives then. Um, which, you know, there's not a lot for this movie. It's mostly, again, nitpick stuff. Um, so, I mean, what uh, is there anything uh, do you want to start us off? Is there anything you want to jump out on? Yeah, like I'm with you. Like, there's not really like a huge like negative. Uh, it's just like, I guess, just a preference. Um, for me, um, it's the, uh, it's, uh, besides Ash and the Demons, the rest of the characters to me were just like a little bit of a waste. Like I understand like I they do. try to like enforce Linda uh, to make you feel bad for her. But just unfortunately, I really didn't feel that same connection I did with Ash. Uh, just I didn't feel like they were just used to their full potential that which probably like they were just there, you know, just to get possessed by the demon and just to entertain us with that. But I like to not just be invested with just one character. I like to kind of get invested with a couple of other characters too. Yeah. And, um, uh, Scott, Cheryl and Linda just, and, um, Shelly. Yeah. Shelly. Um, they just, not the one from Friday that. 13th part three, by the way. It's a different yes. Shelley. Not that Shelly. No, screw that Shelly. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, they, they just didn't do a lot for me, which, again, I'm glad. That's why I'm glad Ash and Bruce Campbell uh, were in this movie, because without that, um, I would have been really concerned with this franchise. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 for, for sure. If Bruce wasn't there to set up kind of the stuff that follows, I mean, it would still be a classic movie, I think, but, like, he's definitely the iconic part of it. Um, the rest of them are hit or miss. I mean, they're fine. They're, they're serviceable, but there's nothing there that's really that memorable. I watched the movie just a few days ago and I already kind of forgot, um, kind of some of their, their names and stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I- um, yeah, like I, I easily agree with you. Like I watched a couple of days ago too, and I was just struggling just to think of the last one, which kind of already shows already, um, one of the little problems in this movie and and i'm pretty sure that you're going to go into this with your negative um but it's not a big one for me so i won't really count it it's just like you said earlier the claymation and just some of the effects yeah. um, just didn't age well um i kind of forgive that because it was like an early 80s movie so and just the budget they were on no budget yeah yeah no budget at all and um it's just, and I want to quickly throw because um, I forgot this for the positives. Um, when the blood hits that light and just goes from a bright room to that dark red room, I just, 
amazing idea. Like you don't need like any money to make that scene happen. Like I don't know whose idea that was, but that was just amazing. They got their creative juices flowing. Oh, big uh, time. It was cool. Like most of my like again, most of my negatives are nitpicks, man. Like it's it's mostly plot stuff and character decisions like why uh, uh Linda uh why she went outside there at the beginning of the movie um when things before she got possessed like I mean I, I don't oh, know um Cheryl Cheryl well, she's yes sorry um like I I just don't know why um she went out the air like I know she was hearing the noises and stuff but that would impel me to stay inside um, again, these are nitpicks, um, but um, that and then the the weird scene where she gets possessed by the trees and stuff, it was a little weird. I know it's oh, iconic gosh. and stuff, and that might be a little um, controversial, but it, to me it was kind of yeah. like, it was a little over the top, but again, it was fine. I mean, it was cool. The scene itself was cool. The effects were cool. It was just kind of weird the way they chose to get her possessed. Yeah, um, um, it was, um, but just like, it just was, it's not my cup of tea. Like, I'm weird on... For the, on the rape, rape scenes, like you can mention it, but I really don't like need to actually see it. Yeah, I don't like, either. Do, like, do you it feel the same? Weird. Yeah, I, that to me, that's kind of the same thing. Again, iconic scene, the effects were amazing. It was just kind of weird. Um, again, that's not a huge deal. Um, just because of the how much work they put into it itself, it was. I mean, it was cool. Um, I thought Bruce again, like he's uh, he's the my biggest positive of the movie. But when you compare him to his future versions. He's a negative because he's, um, you know, he's a little bit more stale in this movie. And, you know, you have the scene there where Scotty is fighting the demons or whatever, the deadites. And Bruce is just kind of like, he's not doing anything. He's kind of just standing back. Um, he's not really kicking ass yet. Now, he gets there later in the movie, so that's fine. It's 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 part of his character development. I get that. But um, he just yeah, wasn't. You could kind of compare it a little bit to um, Ripley and um, Sarah Connor, too. Yes, exactly. You can do that. He kind of grows as the movie goes on. Um, it's not much of a negative, really. I mean, it's just something that I had to pick out of the movie um, that, as something that I, that I noticed. Um, it yeah, been and cool. um, at the same time, like in the same, like I, I totally understand it, and I do agree with you. But I would think, like, just kind of like in the Chucky franchise with Chucky, um, with that first one, I just didn't feel like they knew what they had in Ash. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so, like, they just didn't know what to do. If and after, just the audience watches the movie and is like, "Hey, yeah. I love that guy," and they're like, "Okay, you know what? You love that guy. We'll ramp it up some more. We'll hit the ground running there." And that's what they did, man. And other than that, like, I just didn't find it feasible, plausible, that Linda would remain freaking passed out in her bed back there in the room while freaking Ash and Scotty were duking it out with deadites in the living room. <laughs> yeah. That was one thing I noticed. She was just freaking snoozing, man. Maybe she was short, short on sleep. I don't know. We've all been there, but uh, she was freaking out like a light, and she wasn't getting up, man. She must be a heavy sleeper. Again, mm -hmm. nitpicks. Um, that's it. I mean, that's for me. And um, overall, I mean, I think it's a great flick. Um, it was a good time, and I, I'm glad to revisit it, and I'm glad you saw it for the first time. And again, I, I should it should be added that neither one of us have nostalgia for this movie. We I watched it for the first time maybe a few years back, and Brett just watched it a couple days ago for the first time. But we still love it. I mean, it's great. It's it's a great piece of, uh, of horror history, and and uh, it's obviously yeah, a classic. And easily yeah. a classic. Yeah, really dug the heck out of it, man. I'm excited about it. Yeah. So let me go ahead and ask you, how do you rate this movie? I gave this movie a four point oh out of five stars, um, and uh, that's what I gave it. There you go. Um, I actually going to give this movie a 4.5 out of 5. I'm telling you, so close to being a perfect film. Just the characters, like the side characters, just held it back. So that's why I am rewarding this movie a 4.5 out of 5. You know what that means, ladies and gents. That means it's going to be a 4.25 on the Goodwill hunting slash hunting scale uh, combined efforts. And that is a heck of a score. Oh, such a great score. And um, I, I'm glad we got to go ahead and do this um, review. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the franchise. And uh, I just can't wait, man. Like, I absolutely love this movie and got me excited. Oh, me too. Don't be reading any of them books out there with the freaking the skin on it. Oh, gosh. I, 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 that was just a mistake. So I'll promise to never do it again. And just, you know, just behave myself. Like, I'm, I've been getting myself into trouble recently. <laughs> 
So overall, yeah, it was a good time. Um, if you're new, like again, if you're new to the channel, we got some other videos from Goodwill Haunting this year, so check them out. Uh, we got them here. We got some good stuff. This is the first of several rankings in the Evil Dead franchise. Obviously, we got more coming down the chain, um, and we got plenty of good horror co horror content here coming out this month. Um, so it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fantastic. And we would love it if you guys would go ahead and click that subscribe button and hunt the good reels with us going forward. We could use the assistance. Um, it's going to be a good time, and we hope you join us on our journey. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and I just want to ask the viewers, what did you all think about this movie, The Evil Dead from 1981? Uh, just let us know in the comments section, and we would love to talk about The Evil Dead with you. And as Brad's already pointed out, be sure to subscribe, like this video, and ring that bell so you will get up-to-date content about our videos and when those videos release. Perfecto. Stay out of the woods, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure you do not go near the cabin in the woods. Yeah, is... instead of doing that, you should also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Letterboxd safely in your home. Don't go to the library. Don't go to the cabin. Don't go to Tennessee, which Tennessee is lovely, but just don't go to that part of Tennessee, and we're, we're just going to be okay. If you do make it there, don't go in the basement. Please don't go in the basement. Rocking and rolling. See you guys later. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Hasta la vista, baby. In case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening.